grade threes. This week's work is for the 8th to the 12th of June and I'm going to start with our comprehension for the week which is called what's for breakfast. Now I don't know about you guys, breakfast is the most important thing I think of when I wake up in the mornings. My breakfast during the week consists of jungle oats, a fruit and a nice cappuccino. Over the weekends I tend to indulge a little bit more and I make fried eggs and bacon and toast. I wonder what you will eat for breakfast. I hope it's something healthy. Our breakfasts that we're going to be dealing with in this passage come from all over the world. So let's go ahead. What's for breakfast? Breakfast is the first and most important meal of the day. In our country, people usually eat toast and cereal, but around the world, People eat all kinds of things for breakfast. In some parts of Africa, people eat a corn pudding with sweet milk. Another African breakfast is a topo. This is a mix of green bananas in a beef or bean stew. In a beef or bean stew. Fresh fruits like coconuts and bananas are also eaten. In Japan, many people eat fish rice, soup, dried seaweed, and salad for breakfast. In Vietnam, people eat sticky rice, sweet bread, or po. Po is a rice or noodle soup with meat and herbs. In Turkey, people eat feta cheese, tomato, cucumber, olives, toast with cherry jam, and spicy Turkish sausage. In Germany, cold meats, sausage and cheeses are eaten with different breads. Some of the breads have seeds. Others are so dark, they look black. Brunch is a breakfast. It's a late breakfast. It's a mix of breakfast and lunch. Before we carry on with our activities for the week, I just want to ask you, why is breakfast so important? Why do we need to eat breakfast when we start the day? I think you all agree that our brains need food and of course it gives us the energy we need to do all the activities that we need to do that day. If you look at your Tuesday's lesson plans under Teacher's Guide, you will see that today we're going to discuss plurals, Special words, synonyms, antonyms, small words in big words. That's one of the things you'll see every week when we do comprehension activities. It's divided into Monday's work, where it's the discussion of the topic, the sight words, the meanings of the words, spelling words, and then Tuesdays will be these components on the board. Wednesdays will be nouns, verbs and adjectives and then the last three will be done on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday which is the punctuation, capital letters, full stops and reading the passage with expression. And the last time you do the, you answer the questions at the bottom of the comprehension. But we have done plurals earlier in the year so I hope you remember some of the plural rules. If we look at our comprehension, we see lots of nouns. I've just chosen some of them to highlight. If you look at your um, page that you've got, you will see I've got one breakfast, many breakfasts. That's an easy one. It just gets, gets an S. The next one's a little bit trickier. One country. And then during the term, last term, we learned a little song about the Y becomes an I, and then you add an E, S. So, the Y falls away, and it gets an I, E, S. So it's one country, many countries. One banana, many bananas, that's right. One salad, many salads, we just add an S. And the next one is a tricky one as well. One fish. But it's better to say many fish 
and not mini fishes. One sausage, mini sausages. One cheese, mini cheeses. And one stew, mini stews. But we have some special words there as well. For example, we've got toast and toast. They're the same spelling, but they have different meanings. Toast, the first one, is a noun. And toast, the second one, is a verb. The toast, a noun, is when you take a slice of bread, put it in the toaster, and you land up with toast, nice and crispy. When you drink a toast to someone, you toast someone by holding up your glass and saying cheers to somebody on the celebration of the wedding. So you are toasting them. That is the verb. We've got another one, cereal and cereal. Now there, as you'll see, both of those are nouns. They have an in brackets. So how can they be nouns? but they have different meanings. So, cereal is something that you eat for breakfast in the mornings, like your Rice Krispies, your Cocoa Pops. And the other group, the second cereal, is the group of grains that are grown on the farm. It could be wheat, it could be maize, it could be barley. So the group name for those are cereals. Uh, Bean and bean, those two have different spellings. One is E-A and the other one is double E. The first one will be the noun and B-E-E-N is part of the verb. And then bread and bread. We all know bread, B-R-E-A-D, which is the bread that we eat. And B-R-E-D is when you breed something. So for example, my grandfather, bred Alsatians all of his life. So in other words, he had Alsatians and they had puppies and he would sell them. Right, we come to the next group of words, which is our synonyms. Let's see if you can all remember what they are. What are synonyms? Synonyms are words that have the same meaning, same or similar meaning. Sometimes it's not possible to get exactly the same word, the same meaning, but we try and get as close as possible. So if you look at the ones I've got there for you, we've got kinds and types, green and unripe. That's referring to green bananas. So if they're green, they're not ripe. And then sticky, that could be gooey. Antonyms. We've got antonyms are words with the opposite meaning. We've got first, if you come first in the race, or you come last in the race. Usually and rarely. So in other words, I usually go to school by bus. I rarely walk to school. Some, the opposite of some is all. Some of us enjoy reading. All of us enjoy reading. Sweet and sour. Something can be sweet like chocolate and other things are sour like a lemon. We've got the word fresh. Now fresh can have different meanings. So for example, fresh bread or the opposite of fresh is stale. We've got tinned. So fresh fruit or it could be tinned fruit. Many, many of us love chocolate and only few of us like spinach or broccoli. We've got dried. The opposite of dried could be moist or wet or even fresh. For example, you've got dried raisins or uh, fresh grapes. Different can be similar or same. Those are the opposites. And then dark, and the opposite of dark is light. Right, we come now to the small words, in big words. Those are words that you're going to look for in the story and see how many smaller words you can find in the bigger word. 
So there are some that have got one or two smaller words and some that have got quite a few. I've got just one example on the board here for you, just to show you how it works. So we've got others, which appears in the story. So from that, we can make the word other. We can make the word the. We can also make the word her and the word he. So there are quite a few. I'm not going to go through all of them, but we'll do a few as we go along. We've got been, B-E-A-N. So from there we can make, let's see if you can try and guess. You're right, it's B. We can have an, and then we can have a, like a ball or a cat. We've got Germany. Now that's an interesting one. From Germany, we can find a smaller word, many. And from many, we can find a word, man, and then an, and then a. And then, as I said, there are many others. Right, so that will be the breakdown of what you're going to do every Tuesday for every comprehension. Next week, I'm going to deal with the activities that we're going to do for your comprehension of next week for the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you're going to enjoy answering the questions on Friday.